down and dirty. Tips and tricks for keeping your plane out of the shop. Starring Steve Dirty Hands. Today, how to make a new hinge out of, guess what? The hands are back. And what does that look like? Almost nothing, right? That's an HGPE hinge that we put in there when our hinge broke. And we're going to show you how to do it. I love these things. Less resistance than a foam hinge and snap back to center. Yeah, baby. Today we're here with a Stearman. And this baby, the tail broke off. It fell off its perch. And it was a bit of a drop to the floor. We have crash proofing rods in, but that doesn't keep it from tearing the rudder off, does it? Normally I would do this with the contact cement repair and just leave all the rough stuff on. But this way we clean the rough stuff off first and make it nice and smooth and then we install our hinge into one side and then into the other. This is a little piece of HDPE. We sell sheets of it. You can use milk bottle plastic. Of course it doesn't come in black like this does but hey. So I've already prepped this piece. The whole thing's like 5 eighths wide and I creased it down the middle with the back of a knife right so it knows where to fold. First thing we want to do actually is make sure we know what this distance is for for real, right? So we'll put this back where it was before. And we can see that this here black line pretty much lines up with the back of this yellow rudder part, right? So we want to keep that distancing when we replace our rudder. So you can see actually that we're going to end up with mm, a 330 seconds thick hinge part. So the exposed part of this is going to be 330 seconds wide, which would be 364 on each side of the crease. And then we take our little knife and we clean off all this rough stuff here. Now it's nice to do a straight line. So I'm going to visually follow this here straight line. All right, now we've cleaned off that side pretty much. And we'll want to clean off this side, which is pretty flat the way it is. Just needs a little bit of trimming here and there. Okay, so now what I need to do is to make a cut right down the center. You want these two pieces to line back up, right? So it's got to be right down the middle of each one. First we locate the center of each piece. I'm going to do that with a pair of sticks which will help me see where the outside edges are. So I'm going to gently squeeze these right to find out my true outsides and then mark the center. And then down here, same thing. This is not flat, it's fluted, which makes it a bit more difficult to locate the actual sides. So, center of that, once again, all set ever so slightly. And I have a pretty good eyeball, so I'm just gonna eyeball this. I can see that my center is right there and I can see that my center is right here on this center seam. So this is a good time for an unconventional straight edge. We're only making this little cut in foam and we want to hold this really right on the center so I'm going to jab it in down here so it's right on the center and I'm going to hold it very tightly up here so it's right on the center and cut my foam. I have a really sharp new blade. Now I know that this bottom can't move because it's jammed into the foam, so I'm pretty much safe from my straight edge slipping. Alright, now let's check the piece to see if it fits the slit. I'd say it could be even a hair deeper, or this could be a hair shallower. So we're going to cut this down just a hair because it seems that it wants to go a bit deeper, but it feels like something's in there. I don't know, maybe like our carbon fiber rod. So we want to take off this much. Now it's going to fit right nice. So we're going to use a one by three piece of carbon fiber as a spacer that we put on the side right here and we fold the hinge at a 90 degree angle and have that one by three in there so that the fold itself is this far away from the back of the foam. Now remember, put a tooth on it. Put a head on that, would you? Name that film. I'll give you another line from the film. Ah, ma. There you go. Public enemy. Now we have it folded at a 90 degree angle. We have our spacer. So what I normally do is use a rod or a piece of HDPE to work the glue into the slit. You can put some glue right there 
right where the edge of the slit is and then push it in using a thin tool. You just slide it over, push it in, slide it over, push it in. Now you immediately wipe off the excess. We don't want a bunch of excess glue on our surface and then immediately thereafter get more excess off with a piece of tape. Now we get some glue onto our hinge and we slide it into that slit. We don't want to give this whole lot of time to set up because if we do that's not going to work. We smooth it out so it's a nice thin coat. We get it into the slit and you want to visually check it to make sure that your crease line is that little bit of distance away from the back of this foam here. Let's make sure it's where the spacer bar is, right? Make sure that that fits in there and then open it up a bit, pull out the spacer bar and let that sit for let's say an hour to be safe. And we use the same straight edge we used on the other one. We jam the point in there on that end and then we hold this end so it can't move. And then slit and make sure you stay right on the straight edge. And since we don't have any rods right up next to the edge of this one, we can cut it to the proper depth. If you want to, you can also take a 1.5 millimeter rod and run it up and down inside that there slit to coax it into opening up a little bit. So when I know I can take a pointed rod like this and slide it down inside the groove I just made without any problems, I know I'll be able to get my HDP in there. Oh yeah, baby, like that. Okay, so here it is all ready to put the tail on. This is dry, and we did a little coloring with a little black magic marker on the back of this and on the white part of this so that when you put it all together, it looks like the black stripe goes right up to there. Ooh, right? So we're gonna put the glue in here the same way that we put it in there. We'll start with a tube of welders and apply some to the seam. And then, using a piece of thin HDPE, push it into the seam. And then sweep and push and sweep and push. And now, we take a piece of tape and take off the excess glue right now. We put some glue onto the tab. And I can use my same piece of HDPE to smear that around and take the excess, put it into the slot. Why not? Now I can gauge the stickiness of the slot at the same time. Not too sticky yet, and that's good. So we're not gonna wait as long as we normally do with contact cement. We're gonna wait like 30 seconds or something. Enough time for it to start getting tacky because it is in an enclosed space in here. This stuff will start drying. The more both sides dry, the harder it'll be for us to slide it into the slit. So we don't want to get too wacky on the dry time. While we're waiting, why don't we touch up our black? And I think that's enough waiting. Let's put it on. And then we work this into position and get it where we want it. Check everything, make sure it's all nice. Make sure it's centered. Give it a few squeezes. All right, it's a beautiful thing. Now we're just gonna let this dry for an hour or so. So there it is. This is the finished product. We let it sit for about an hour, maybe a little more. This is now glued on big time. You can't pull this off. You can't break this, not the way you break these or any other hinge you can put on a plane. So this is a nice feature. Snap back to center because it's a straight piece of plastic that wants to go back to the shape it was. And when you put them on some other surface, you don't need to fill up the whole surface. You might want to sand it down a little bit to either make it thinner or cut pieces out of it or something like that to make it less resistant to your servo so that it doesn't need to work so hard. And that's it. We'll see you on the fly line.